Welcome to Get Teched. My name is Elizabeth, and today things are getting a little chilly. I'm going to show you how to monitor your fridge or freezer using a temperature sensor and a Raspberry Pi Zero. Before we get started, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell to get notified so I can continue to bring you these magnificent videos. Temperature is always a high priority for monitoring. Fridges and freezers make it all that more important because you're storing something valuable. Workplaces like crime labs, pharmacies, and medical facilities all have items that require cold or freezing temperatures and those temperatures must remain consistent. I'm going to show you a way to monitor freezer temperatures with a Raspberry Pi, a temperature sensor, and a data visualization tool. This project came about because my coworker was worried about his wife's breast milk. Referred to as liquid gold, this is something you can't afford losing because of fridge malfunctions. He had an incident with his garage freezer where it broke and he lost all of his ribs, pork butts, and mozzarella sticks. After that, he learned his lesson and he implemented this solution so he wouldn't lose any more meat or breast milk ever again. Here's what you'll need to build this project. We're gonna use a Raspberry Pi Zero W or WH with an SD card and a charger. We're gonna use a BME 280 temperature sensor, a Hammond miniature ABS enclosure, a flat flex cable, and a data visualization tool to view the data and set alerts. The Raspberry Pi Zero is small, cheap, and can connect to Wi-Fi. For the data visualization tool, I will be using initial state, but you can use whatever you want here. You'll just need to modify the code. Initial State has a free tier for students, and for individuals, it's $9.99 per month. It has real-time data visualizations, alerts on your data, and historical data storage. But again, use what you want for this. This is just a place to start. Once you do register for your Initial State account, go to your settings, and you'll find your access keys here. We'll use these later in our temperature streaming code. There are some modifications we need to make to the parts to make sure everything fits nicely. The flat flex cable has eight connectors, but the sensor only has seven. So you can use a knife or a pair of scissors to carefully strip one of the connectors off of the cable. Once you do this, the cable will fit in perfectly with the sensor. You'll wanna solder the flat flex cable to the sensor to make sure you have a secure connection. The enclosure needs slight modification so that the cable can fit without any friction. So what you'll need to do is cut away some of the plastic internal ridge so that when you put the cable inside, it doesn't clamp down on it and it actually just fits in nicely. This is easily done with a Dremel tool, but it can be accomplished in other ways as well. Before you close the sensor in and seal it with the two screws, you'll wanna make sure that you mark the pins so that you know what you're connecting to your Pi. Now for the other end of the flat flex cable. We wanna connect this end to the Pi. You can cut the cable right at the ends so that your ends are more flexible and you can connect them to the necessary pins. I'd recommend soldering this as well so that you make sure you have a secure connection. So from the sensor to the Pi, Here's the connections you'll wanna make. V in on the sensor goes to pin one on the Pi. Ground on the sensor goes to pin six on the Pi. SCK on the sensor goes to pin five on the Pi. And SDI on the sensor goes to pin three on the Pi. Now that you have all your hardware connected, let's move on to the software piece. I'll assume that you already have Raspberry Pi OS running on your Pi and you've connected to Wi-Fi. Since we are running headless, you can actually use Raspberry Pi OS Lite, but you'll need to do all the development through SSH, not a monitor. If you're working with a fresh board, there are instructions in the tutorial for how to do all of this. Link in the bio. This project runs on Python 3, so you'll need to make sure you have that installed as well. The first thing we need to do is make sure that i 2 seed is enabled on your Pi. So type in the terminal window, sudo raspi-config. Select option five, yes to enable, and finish. Now install smbus and i squared c tools sudo. So type in app-get install-y python-smbus i2c-tools. 
Verify installation using this command, ls mod vertical line grep i2c underscore. Now type in sudo i2c detect dash y1 and you should see the sensor at address 77 or sometimes it can be at 76 or another address, but as long as you see the sensor at an address. If you don't see the sensor at all, check your connections and reboot your Pi. You'll need to add a few Python libraries for this project. If you're using Raspbian Lite, you'll need to install pip to make installing everything easier. Standard Raspbian OS already has pip installed, whereas Lite does not. So if you need to install it, type in sudo app install python3 pip. Next is the BME280 Raspberry Pi driver, which gives us quick access to sensor readings. So type in sudo pip3 install rpi period BME280. The last is the initial state streamer module. Type in sudo pip3 install is streamer. Now for the Python script to read the sensor and send the data to initial state. To create the Python file, type in nano freezer underscore monitor dot py. Copy and paste the code from the tutorial into the text editor. The user settings can be found on lines six through 12. So line seven is your sensor name, line eight is your bucket name, line nine is your bucket key, line 10 is your access key that can be found in your account settings. You'll need to enter your access key here. Line 11 is the minutes between sensor readings. Line 16 is your sensor address. If it's different from address 77, like I said, I've seen it at 76 before, make that change here. So if you're using this script to test the sensor, uncomment lines 36 and 37 and comment line 40. The added code at the bottom is to test your implementation more efficiently. It reduces the sleep time so that your sensor reads faster and prints to the console. So if you're testing your sensor, make those changes. If you're not, leave them as is. Save and exit the text editor. To run your script, type in sudo python3 freezer underscore monitor period py. Check to see if it worked by going to your initial state dashboard. You should see a bucket called pantry freezer or whatever you change your location name to with temperature and humidity data in it. Now it's time to customize your dashboard. What we can do is change your temperature to thermometer gauges your humidity to liquid level gauges, and we can add line graphs so we can see long-term trends. We can add a background image, and it can be a picture of a random freezer, a picture of something cold, whatever you want. The possibilities for your dashboard designs are endless. The most important thing you'll wanna do is set a trigger so you can be alerted if temperatures start to rise. So go to your bucket settings and go to the triggers tab. For the stream key, enter the signal you want to monitor, which will be temperature. Change the operator to greater than and enter a value that makes sense for your fridge or freezer. If it's your freezer, anything above 32. If it's your fridge, depends how cold you keep it. You can change the alert message to anything you want and you can choose to send it to your phone or email. Click create and click done and now you have an alert if things start to get toasty. The last software piece we want to do before we permanently set up the Pi and the sensor is CronTab. CronTab will allow you to run the script on boot, so if the power goes out, or your Pi restarts, or you plug it, you know, the plug falls out and you gotta plug it back in the wall, it will run your script in the background when it starts up. So type in CronTab-E. If this is your first time using CronTab, it will ask you what text editor you want to use. I chose nano. Go to the bottom of the file and enter at reboot no hup python3 slash home slash pi slash freezer underscore monitor slash freezer underscore monitor dot py ampersand. You'll need to specify the exact path file for your script. Mine is in a folder called freezer underscore monitor. No hup means no hang up so it'll allow this to run in the background. Once you have all this done and your sensor is reading data, we can fully install the design in your fridge or freezer. To keep your Pi and sensor in place, I'd recommend using 
uh, double-sided Velcro or suction cups to actually hold them onto the side of your fridge or freezer. So you'll place the sensor on the inside of your fridge and the pie on the outside with the flex cable sitting through the door. So when the door closes, it actually won't hurt the flex cable or anything like that. Um, here are some pictures of it actually installed in a fridge or freezer. So you may be worried about power outages or unexpected things happening with your Pi that may cause the signal to drop. To monitor this, you can use Initial State's Bucket Watchdog integration. It'll make sure the data is consistently streaming in, no code required to set this up, and you can easily set another alert to let you know if any signals drop. There are directions in the tutorial for how to set this up. You've now built your own reliable freezer monitoring system, and you'll never have to worry about losing another box of mozzarella sticks again. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel, show us your freezer monitor projects on Twitter, and until next time, stay cool or frozen. Hey Roy, come here.